Beginning in January 2015, New Haven union members organized a grassroots response to a privatization proposal that threatened to divert scarce resources away from the students they educate. The proposal was for the local district to partner with private charter management company Achievement First, also known as AF, on a new taxpayer-funded school. New Haven Federation of Teachers members led efforts to turn out parents, students, elected officials, and advocates for two Board of Education meetings where the plan was presented and discussed. Before, school officials in late February ultimately dropped the proposed charter in response to overwhelming community opposition. So it was really important that we did engage uh, the, the community, uh, the, the board, uh, the administrators. Uh, you know, it, it was um, a little bit funny, I don't want to say it's the wrong way, but a little bit of strange bedfellows there. I mean, to be arm in arm with the administrators on this, because at the end of the day, we recognize these are our kids. So whether you're a, a principal or a classroom teacher, uh, it's the same thing. We're, we're all here. We do the same job day in and day out for the students here. Color invitations were sent to selected homes, and you as well as partnered with a group that has a multi-million dollar ad campaign presently going on. You don't need our money to get this done. So until our New Haven Public School students receive what is allotted to them from the state, I cannot move forward with this proposal. And it's not because I'm against Achievement First. All our kids, I believe, are important to every single person in this room. I am a seventh grader right now, I'm 13 years old, and honestly, what people have been saying, it is true, it is about the kids, and the kids need to have say this too. In my opinion, instead of wanting to build another school, we should use that money instead in focusing on buying stuff for the school that needs it, getting more teachers that needs it, and getting more nurses. In my school, we only have the nurse for Monday and Tuesday. So that means, let's say I have a stomach ache on Thursday, I have to go home and I have to miss my class. If I get a stomach ache before lunch, I'm missing my science class, my math class. And honestly, in my opinion, I need my math class so I can succeed and I could go on to another college. I need to go on to a good college. I'm curious what the timeline has been for the Elm City Imagine proposal. Uh, when did negotiations start on this? Who is included in discussions about the school? If this is truly a collaboration with New Haven Public Schools, why weren't teachers, parents, community members brought in from the beginning to collaborate on this project? I mean, it was a divisive issue. There's no getting around that. But we didn't want it to be to degenerate into uh, something that was really negative and shouting match type of thing. Um, you know, that's, that's the tactic of some folks. You know, we've tried, you know, AFT and the NHFT as well. I mean, we just try not to operate that way. It doesn't, doesn't really get, doesn't do any good. If the New Haven Board of Education accepts, accepts this proposed partnership deal with Achievement First, it will be a public admission that the superintendent, top school administrators, and the Board of Education lack the vision, the skills, <laughs> lack the vision, the skills, the intellect, and experience necessary to run our public schools. I don't support this for, for a second. Achievement First has their own culture, their own way of doing things, and they have their own way of getting money. And the New Haven Public School and this public school board ought to be focused on the public schools and what it is that you deliver. I was really very proud that just how much uh, we came together on this and just a number of folks that you know went to the meeting made it a point to show up spent hours at that meeting you know on, on a school night you know and they have to again family obligations as well and school obligations the, the very next morning uh, but it was very satisfying you know it was an important issue for us um, but it's easy, some organizations always leave that to leadership. Somebody else has that. And uh, our teachers didn't do that. They, they took ownership uh, of it. So. Before we give what precious little we have to a private institution that has so much already, I would urge the board to invest in our students, our communities, and our public schools. And just one additional comment. Um, if Achievement first, first implements instructional practices that work, then they should share it with New Haven Public School teachers and the board freely because that's what good teachers do. That's what we do. But as I say, I have nothing against Achievement First. In fact, nine years ago, I even started to fill out the application to teach there. But the essay question stumped me. It was not, how do you get your students to think critically? 
It was not, how do you get your students to dream big and go after those dreams? It was not, how do you teach your students to be responsible, active citizens? Their essay question was, how do you get young children to stand in a line? <laughs> Discipline, compliance, and control. What concerns me most about this partnership is the abject sacrifice of democratic governance of our schools. Why is the superintendent asking you, the New Haven Board of Education, to turn over school control to people who will never call him their boss and who will have to answer to a different set of bosses from yourselves? Many AF board members do not live in New Haven, and AF teachers and principals are often not certified by the state of Connecticut to teach or lead in our schools. Where is the oversight of these supposedly public schools and their hiring and employment practices? I mean, our jobs were not being threatened by this. So we could have easily just marched along. So they have a charter school. So what? Let them have the charter school. It doesn't really affect me. I still do what I have to do. But none of us feel that way. I mean, that's not the way we should feel. Um, and none of us do. So it was, again, a really passionate about a really, we were very steadfast in our position. Uh, and again, we tried to be professional, take the high road as much as we can. Yet at the same time, you know, there had to be some, you know, um, you know some passion to, to what we said. Okay, I ask you guys to support it. It's a moratorium on charters for five years till they prove that they do what we do, okay? This isn't only about achievement first in the city. It's the country. So for the board to really dig in, because many boards don't, you know, they, they take their cue from the superintendent or from the mayor. Uh, they get a few bullet points and they ask a few questions for the public session, but they don't really dig in. They don't really push back. So it was, uh, I mean, the Board of Ed, uh, led by Dr. Uh, Carlos Torrey, deserves a tremendous amount of credit for, uh, for pushing back on that. Because I, I couldn't imagine the pressure they were under from the different advocacy groups for, and the community groups for the charter schools. I don't see this taking place in March, and uh, we're not going to be pressured on taking a decision in March. We're going to do this again on the time that it needs to take in order to do the right thing for our kids. We have a lot of work that we need to do that's our business. And so if it means that this has to be, you know, if a decision needs to be made that this is then put to the side, then that's what's going to happen. And the same for the superintendent. I mean, the easiest thing for him to do uh, was to just kind of bow to the pressure and say, well, we'll address it and find some compromise in the middle of the road. That kind of addressed everyone's issue, but I mean, some things can't be compromised away, uh, and this is one of those, I think, if you tried to compromise, you would have done a little bit of this, and a little bit of that, and at the end, a whole lot of nothing. Back in September, the governor was here. We were at Fairhaven Middle School, my school I taught there for 28 years, a uh, place near, near and dear to my heart. Um, but we had teachers there, Garth, uh, assistant superintendent, Amy McKinley was there, 15 teachers, teacher facilitators. Uh, again, the, the, the governor as well, Mayor Harp was there. Um, and you know, toured the building, went through a couple different classrooms, uh, um, had a great panel discussion. Uh, so I mean, again, that was back in September, and now here we are. You know, things really seemed they got off track, or uh, to a certain degree, um, at least sidetracked um, with the, the distraction. But that's kind of how I prefer to think about it. It is a distraction uh, because here we're sitting now. It's the first week of March. Um, and yes, it was a topic, you know, hot topic and important piece for, you know, probably a large part of our winter. But, um, but you know, as we enter the spring, it's behind us now. And yes, there's some you know, a few wounds here that probably need to be healed. Um, but time is a great healer. Um, and, and most of us kind of bounce back pretty quick. Uh, a lot of work to do, fortunately. So we're not going to have a whole lot of time to dwell on it. Everyone's now is back to doing what we, you know, we do best. New Haven teachers have shown that by being a strong union, together we can reclaim the promise of public education for all our students.